Hey there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us during National Park Week and especially today for Friendship Friday. My name is Alyssa and I'm a ranger at Theodore Roosevelt Birthplace National Historic Site located at 28 East 20th Street in Manhattan. I'm standing in the front parlor of the birthplace and as you can see, it's a very ornately decorated room with the wallpaper, roses carved into a fireplace and ornamental objects on the mantelpiece above the fireplace. Now today I'm joined by Lindsay Davenport from Sagmore Hill National Historic Site. It's so great, Lindsay, to see you again and share Friendship Friday with you. How's everything? Hey, Alyssa. Happy Friendship Friday. I'm doing really well, and I'm so happy to be here with you virtually from Sagamore Hill National Historic Site. It wasn't too long ago when you and I were sharing offices upstairs here at the birthplace while you were working at Stonewall National Monument. Oh, I know, but I'm not that far from you. Oyster Bay, um, where Theodore Roosevelt built his home, Sagamore Hill, is really only an hour and 20 minutes drive from the city and from where you are at the birthplace. So we're real close to each other still. Yes, this is true. And I bet life at Sagamore Hill is completely different than life here at 28 East 20th Street, eh? Definitely different, that's for sure. Um, but it's beautiful and I love it here. We have uh, trees and different wildlife. I saw a fox the other day, that was exciting. Um, and we have a beach, so there's a lot to see and do here. And I can tell why he built his home where he did. So I have to admit, I've never been out to Sagamore Hill. So we'll have to plan a visit when your site reopens. But in the meantime, we can share our sites virtually, right? Exactly. And I'm so excited to share my site with you and with everybody watching through our conversation today. So to kick things off, I have a question for you. Um, so you work at Theodore Roosevelt's birthplace. And so I have to ask, who was the greatest influence on Theodore Roosevelt growing up? Who had the greatest influence on Theodore Roosevelt? I'd say his dad did, definitely. Theodore Sr. had a huge influence on young T.D., as he was called during his childhood. Uh, we see kind of multiple occasions in the autobiography where Theodore Jr. mentions his father, describes him as kind of an honorable man, and in fact says something along the lines of, he was the best man I ever knew and the only man from which I was really ever afraid. Uh, he describes his father holding him tightly, walking him up and down the hallways while he was suffering from his asthma attacks. Uh, he recalls going to the newsboys' lodging home with his father and brother to help the newsboys, who were essentially homeless boys on the streets of Manhattan selling newspapers. Um, and then you read about kind of the lasting impact that his father had on him. So, for example, when Theodore Roosevelt was at Harvard College, Harvard, Harvard University, as they say up in Boston, um, when his father passes, you see that Theodore Roosevelt Jr. is trying to kind of fill his father's shoes, trying to live up to his image, uh, and then coming to the conclusion that really, like, I can try my hardest, but I will never be my dad, and it's time to kind of be my own person, uh, living up to the ideals of my father. Uh, as president, he would often say, whenever I faced a difficult decision, I'd ask, what would my father do in this case? And even Corinne, Theodore's sister, writes in her book about how Theodore's decision to join the volunteer cavalry in the Spanish-American War was really due in part because of his father father's decision not to fight in the Spanish, or excuse me, in the Civil War. So again, multiple occasions where you can see the influence of Theodore Sr. on Theodore Jr. So his father was definitely a heavy influence. But I have a question for you. Why did Theodore Roosevelt decide to build Sagamore Hill out on Oyster Bay? And why not like out west, for example? I'm so glad you asked me that. So there's a few reasons. I mean, other than the fact that it's just gorgeous here. Um, he actually had a lot of family that had settled in the area already. So most of the Roosevelt family was kind of firmly entrenched in the tri-state area. And so he always knew he wanted to stay here and he wanted to stay near his family. Oyster Bay was a huge draw because the Roosevelts were already kind of building a community out here. He had some cousins and uncles that had already lived out here. And eventually too, he would sell land to another cousin as well as his sister. Um, so there, was, there were quite a few Roosevelts out here and there was never a shortage of family um, and togetherness. And part of the, the reason that the, the second reason came about was this family here. So his father, who you've already mentioned, is a huge influence on him. 
um, when he was 15, started to rent space out here. It was a house called Tranquility, not too far from Sagamore Hill, and he spent his summers there and he loved it. Um, it offered a lot of opportunities for different things he was interested in, um, sports, rowing, shooting, studying birds, things like that. And he had those memories in his head as he was choosing a home. He and his first wife, Alice, have their honeymoon out here when they get married and eventually he buys this land and he starts to build the home. In 1884, she dies. And that's when he first goes out west. So he had already had this property before he was heading out west. Um, so he, he decided to keep it. And eventually, it, it, his family, he marries Edith and his family is here. There's also the added convenience factor of the railroad. It was very easy to get back and forth between New York and Oyster Bay. And this, too, becomes his summer White House. So he, he really sets himself up here. And I, he loved the home, and he loved Oyster Bay. But what is the one thing you want visitors to take away from your tour or your site? What do I want visitors to walk away with after their visit here? Um, so on my tours, what I try to do is connect what people know about Theodore Roosevelt with his childhood uh, and to kind of explore the influence of his childhood on his adulthood accomplishments. So for example, visitors might know Theodore is the conservation president, the Rough Rider. Uh, he was governor of New York. Right, but these are all accomplishments that he achieves in his adulthood life. What people might not know so much about is the childhood that influenced those later accomplishments. So for example, when we are in the library, I talk about Theodore's innate curiosity with the outdoors and natural history. And even in his own writing, Theodore Roosevelt later in his book, My Life as a Naturalist would say, I can no more explain as to why I love the outdoors and natural history um, than how much I love California canned peaches. But yeah, I mean, here's a boy who is innately curious in the outdoors. And so then as time goes on and he becomes more aware, more well-traveled, he then takes action as, a, as an adult man, but really it's rooted in his childhood. So I guess that's kind of the one thing that I want visitors to walk away with, just understanding that childhood has a huge influence or can have a huge influence later on in life. But what about you? What's your favorite object or room in Sagamore Hill and why? Hmm, my favorite room and why? The library. I love the library. Uh, when the home is first, when they're first settling into the home, it's used as the family room. So this is where they gather and relax. They play games. They read books. They talk. They just spend time together as a family. And it's an energy you can really feel um, when you're looking into that room. Eventually, when Sagamore Hill transitions more into its summer White House phase, the family has moved out of there. But in 1905, the room behind me is added on. It's called the North Room, and it becomes more of the formal hosting area um, and gathering space. And the library can go back to being more of a personal space. And what I love most about the library, I think, is the objects that are in there. It's, it's a very highly curated collection by Theodore Roosevelt himself. It's all things that inspire him or remind him of a memory with somebody. So whereas the objects in the room behind me um, are important to him, but a lot of them are the more official gifts or presentations that he was given over his political career. What you'll see in the library is a lot of things that was given to him by friends or things that he really enjoyed looking at every day. And it makes sense. I mean, he did a lot, of, a lot of his work in there, and a lot of time was spent in there. So he wanted objects that made him happy, and that inspired him. And so you, it, the library is such an interesting room. It's very him. I mean, the whole house is very him, but the library itself is, a, is in my opinion, one of the most important rooms in the house. So I ask this of all my friends who work in the National Park Service, because we really do have the coolest job. But what is your favorite part? What is the most inspiring thing to you? What, what do you love about what you do? I think when I have those moments as a ranger where I can see the impact or influence that I've had on a visitor, um, or a connection that I have facilitated for them between themselves and the site. Uh, I had a moment where I was giving a tour and after that tour, a visitor came up to me and said, hey, Alyssa, the one thing I'm going to walk away from your tour with is new vocabulary. 
and I asked this visitor, well, what, what do you mean? What are you going to use as new vocabulary? And he said, you know, in the parlor you mentioned enslaved individual. And I had never heard that term, and yet it makes complete sense to use. And we kind of got in a discussion as to like where that term came from or what led me to use it, um, which was ultimately African Burial Ground National Monument. Um, but here's a visitor who, out of all of the opportunities that I try to provide during my tour, will walk away using a term that he had never heard of before. So that was a moment where I realized what kind of impact I had on a visitor. And, you know, that's a very powerful thing that I am constantly aware of and trying not to take advantage of, um, but being aware of what kind of responsibility we have as rangers, knowing that we have that influence on visitors. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite part of the job. But what about you? What's a typical day in the life of a museum tech at Sagamore Hill like? My job here as a museum technician involves so much. There's never a dull moment, and no day is the same, and that's exactly how I like it. Um, but the day-to-day the -day is a lot of it is taking care of this beautiful house. And um, it's a lot of, like, I start my day every day by walking through the house. I carefully check each of the rooms, make sure, you know, nothing needs my attention. There's no dusting that needs to be done. None of the objects seem like they're in danger in any way. Um, and then I make a mental note of things that I want to return back to throughout the day. Um, and that's how I do spend a lot of my day. Uh, I also love getting research requests. That is one of my favorite parts of this job, are the research requests. It's like playing detective. And I love connecting people with information and answering questions. And I love other people's curiosity. It sparks my own curiosity. And so I, that's one of my favorite parts of the job. And um, another thing that I love to do here is I help take care of the archives as well. So that's mainly paper, documents, newspapers, letters, photos, things like that. But there are some objects um, that, again, really kind of help me connect visitors and connect the public to this space and to this story. And it's just one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done. And I, I just love my job so much. Wow. And now I'm totally jealous and want to visit Sagamore Hill. Is there a way to do that? The house remains closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but our grounds are open every day. And it's a beautiful place to just get outside, get some fresh air, take a walk. And we encourage you to come and see us. You can get more information as well on our website, www.nps.gov slash S-A-H-I. That's a good place to find out information and some history about the site. If you wanted to get inside the house, you can do so through our Google Arts and Culture page, also found through our website. And it's a great way to take a peek inside the rooms, as well as see some of the objects and the art in our collection. We're also very active on social media. So we have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a Twitter. So we definitely encourage you to check us out there as well. I'm sure it's the same with you, right, Alyssa? Yep, and we also put more content on the website, including a virtual ranger guided house tour. So check it out at www.nps.gov slash THRB. We also have Instagram and Facebook, so like us on Facebook, follow us, and we will let you know when more content rolls out or when programs are. But Lindsay, it was so great to share Friendship Friday with you. It was so good to see you, and hopefully we can reunite soon when these sites open again. Absolutely. I'm so glad we got to do this today. From everyone From at the, the National, National Park, Park Service, Service. Happy, Happy National, National Park, Park Week. Park Week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.